All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. So, okay ba yung audio? Naririnig nyo ba ako? Parang yun yung opening spiel, no? Every time may klase, kung naririnig nyo ako or hindi. <laughs> okay ba? Dinig po, sir. All right. Thank you. So, uh, good morning again, everybody, and welcome to uh, Math uh, ano 155, Advanced Calculus 1. So, I'm seeing uh, familiar faces, or I mean familiar names, or familiar DPs. So, um, iba naging sudyante ko ng 101, and others are from Math uh, 174, 175. So welcome guys. Uh, is there somebody who is new to uh, to my class or yung ngayon lang ako magiging teacher? Para alam ko kung kailangan ko magpakilala at magyabang ng konti. Para ma-feel nyo na in, um, you are in uh, in um, enable hands or something. Uh, let's see. Shove hands please. Sino yung first time na magiging teacher ako? So meaning, di ko kayo naging sudyante last semester. Really? Lahat kayo at naging sadyante ko last semester? Sige, titrace ko yan. Ha? Wala nag-raise hand ngayon. <laughs> okay, so if that is the case, so if you were all my students last semester, so I don't need to introduce myself anymore. So um, we can uh, then proceed to uh, to uh, discussing the course outline and probably start the discussion with uh, Math 155. Pero sige, bago yun, uh, kumusta ang wellness period? Actually, ang haba-haba ng bakasyon pala natin. No? We had uh, we had uh, almost one month of uh, semestral break and then it was followed by two weeks of the wellness period. So, kumusta naman guys? Nakapag-relax ba kayo? Nakabawi from all those uh, traumatic experience uh, first semester? Hopefully, wala masyadong trauma from Math 101 and the uh, Math 174, kasi if there was, so siguro isusumpa nyo ako and then isusumpa nyo yung schedule this semester kasi ako na naman yung magiging teacher nyo with this very important subject, Math 155. So, uh, yun. Uh, salita naman kayo guys. Uh, how was your vacation? Ready for the coming semester? Hello po sir. Good morning po. Oh, Hi Lyra. So, kita no? <laughs> oh, po. All right. Ay, naman po ako, pero half po ng vacation ko po nasa ospital tsaka in quarantine. So medyo hindi medyo hindi din po sulit yung bakasyon. Pero okay lang po. Okay na ah, okay. po ako. Eh. Pero okay ka na. Apo. Ah, <laughs> All right, good to hear that. Uh yeah. Parang ganoon din yung nangyari sa father ko parang nung kasagsagan ng uh, kasagsagan ng ng first wave ng pandemic. So, uh, na, na hospital siya, he tested positive, and uh, though asymptomatic siya, required, ni-require siya na magstay sa hospital for 14 days. And then dahil COVID, mahigpit pa nung March 2020, so nakasolo siya, naka-isolate. So sabi ko sa kanya, isipin mo na lang naka-staycation ka dyan, meron kang personal attendant na nurse, tapos meron kang uh, television, aircon, etc., Pero mahirap pa rin mentally, no? So, um, it's nice to hear that you already, uh, uh, that you're already well. Pero yun niya, sayang, sayang nga yung two weeks, no? Pero at least, uh, merong additional two weeks na wellness period. So, how about the others? Um, so, ano to? Monologue na naman ako for the entire semester. <laughs> Good morning, sir. Uh, si David po ito. And I think nakapag-relax naman na na I was able to take the time nung break and ang same break to think about uh, non-acad related na bagay-bagay. Okay. contemplate sa buhay state, sir. Yeah. Wow. Alright, good to hear that. Uh, kasi ngayon sasabak na naman tayo sa mga acads. I know Lyra and David are my students in math uh, 174, 175. Yung mga taga 101 naman last semester, kumusta naman kayo? Sila yung mga pabibong klase. Mas pabibo kaya sa dun sa 174 last sem. Eh. Pero tahimik yata sila. Or dahil wala pang bonus points. Kaya ayaw nyo pa magsalita. Ano? <laughs> mm -hmm. Crew, crew. Alright, so kung ayaw nyo na mag-share, so uh, ako na lang yung mag-share. But I'll share my screen. So off ko na muna yung video. 
Yung mga dati kong mga naging estudyante, sanay na sila na pag mag-start ng discussion, I turn my video off. Uh, I hope that's fine. Hindi nyo naman ako kailangan makita para maintindihan yung lessons. But some people, uh, I, heard, I heard some people say na mas okay daw na nakikita ng mga estudyante yung teacher nila habang nagdi-discuss. So just let me know what you think, but I think it's more comfortable for me. And I hope it is also for you. Na naka-off yung video ko kasi most likely nakatungo rin ako sa tablet ko and writing annotations on the uh, on uh, on the PDF file that we will be using. But let me know if um, if it's uh, more um, it's uh, if it's more effective for for um, for more students or for a good number of students in the class, and I'll be fine uh, opening my camera. Nicola nagawa yun sa Math 101 last semester, especially dun sa 8.30 to 10 na class. Or 8.30 to 10 ba yun? Uh, basta yung maagang klase, eh, pati yung 174 na maaga. Kasi usually nagigising ako mga 10 or 20 minutes before class, no time to prepare. Minsan diretso na sa, sa Teams, tapos magla-klase na lang, and then balik tulog after. The perks of working from home, pero alam ko mahirap for... Uh, for some, itong setup natin. But I hope you guys have already adjusted a little bit to this setup kasi mukhang we'll stay uh, in this setup for at least uh, this semester. For sure, for this semester. And I think there is still a good chance that we are still uh, doing online next uh, semester. Pero there are promises na baka mag face-to-face -face na, but uh, I'm not sure about it yet. Okay, so... Uh, Wala na bang mga chit chat na pahabol? So if that's the case, then I'm gonna go to uh, the course guide. So these uh, materials are already in Canvas. So I hope you guys are uh, nakuhan yung link. So I assume that everybody is on Canvas already. Um, and then uh, I I'm still seeing some guests in MS Teams. So that's fine. You can stay as guests if you do not have your uh, your um, Outlook at up. Uh, at up. Edu. Ph accounts yet, uh, but I strongly suggest you you get your account. Request one from uh, from ITC. Balikan niyo yung uh, I have a post in the Facebook group uh, for the students and faculty of math division on how to request for uh, for uh, up uh, for um, Office three six five account courtesy of up. So para ma ma experience niyo yung or magamit niyo lahat ng features ng MS Teams. A disadvantage of not being on the team is uh, parang disabled yung chat for those who are not uh, members of the team. And second, ay uh, wala kayong instant access to the recordings because uh, sa MS Teams once I hang the uh, the meeting up, uh nag-start na niyang i-save yung recording and you can go back to the channel where we did the meeting and then dun sa dun sa convo or dun sa thread no meeting you can access the recordings right away so that means 5 minutes after the class without me doing anything you can watch the recording on demand right away okay pero kung hindi kay member antay nyo pa na ma-download ko siya from Teams ma-upload siya sa YouTube tapos yung link i share ko dun sa Canvas site natin all right so uh yan yung isa yung uh, option all right uh, kasi sabi ng iba, mas madali daw sa YouTube kasi nado-download nila and uh, uh, may mga data promos yung mga, yung mga telecom providers natin na mas, uh, uh, na mas mura yung access to YouTube than, uh, put, uh, than going to uh, OneDrive and then watching it on OneDrive which will require to log in uh, using your UP credentials again. So medyo mabusisi yung proseso. Okay? Now, uh, okay, so with that preliminaries out of the way, let's look at the technical aspects of the course. So this course guide, uh, let's just run through it. Okay, so this is Math 155, uh, Advanced Calculus 1. So the prerequisite for this course is uh, ano nga ba? Math 101 and Math 38, I think. Tama nga ba, guys? So make sure you satisfy those prerequisites. Um, and then... Uh, what should uh, what will we do in this course? Well, we will learn the concepts of the theory of real numbers and the analysis of functions of one variable. So, in BXBM, the first unit will deal about recreating the real number system. So, though we had been using the real numbers since we are in elementary, ngayon bubusisi natin kung 
bakit ganun kaganda or bakit nag-hold yung mga properties na ginagamit natin ever since we learned real numbers, right? For instance, later we will learn that 8 times 0 is equal to 0, which might be absurd. Okay, kung isipin nyo, alam mo na yan, from elementary, that 8 times 0 is equal to 0. Tinuro na yan nun. Pero have you wondered why? Okay, so binigyan ba kayo ng proof nung instructor nyo, nung teacher nyo nung elementary ng 8 times 0 ay equal kay 0? Of course, that's beyond the uh, that's beyond the coverage of elementary mathematics. Kasi don utility lang gusto lang natin magcompute. But since you entered the math and applied math program, so kailangan matutunan natin bakit ganon yun nangyayare, right? So this is much more of asking bakit, why those things happen, bakit ganito sila define sa elementary, bakit ganito yung ginawa sa math 36, 37, and 38. So we'll be justifying everything that we did before in so far as real numbers and the functions of one variable are concerned. Okay? So dun sa analysis of functions of one variable naman, we will look at bakit ganun yung ginagawa natin sa 36? Bakit ganito yung continuity? Um, is there another approach in checking whether a function is continuous or not? Bakit uh, kapag ka-differentiable ang isang function siya ay continuous? What, uh, why do we have the intermediate and the mean value theorems? And uh, what are their implications? So, so yung mga sasagutin natin. So in short, Math 155 is basically justifying everything that we knew from calculus. Okay? So since this is a major course, we will be proving a lot of things. Because again, the main question here is why? Not not more uh, not not on the uh, how side kasi yung how nagawa niyo na yon sa 30 series natuto kayo mag differentiate mag take ng limit mag integrate ng functions all right ngayon tatanungin natin bakit ganoon yung techniques bakit sila gumagana and we will even probe the more fundamental questions na bakit ganoon define yung integrability bakit ang differentiability ito yung definition so because everything is a, has a por, uh, everything has a purpose, okay? At yun yung it uh, try natin busisian dito sa math 155, okay? So this is more of a profound course. We'll be digging deep into the uh, nitty gritty and to the origins of these concepts. And I will ask you to sometimes uh, unlearn or forget for a moment all those things that you have learned before. I will be appealing to the meta axiom of ignorance. Okay, so sa meta axiom of ignorance, ang alam nyo lamang ay yung mga define, yung mga na-prove sa klase, at yung mga sinabi ko na pwede nyong i-assume. Alright? You cannot use anything uh, beside those things. Alright? So, yun yung problema rito. So, I don't know. It's a double-edged sword actually. Advantage siya, kasi ibig sabihin, lahat ng pwede nyong gamitin sa course na to ay kailangan kong ibigay. Kailangan kong sabihin, alright? So, kaya, kaya medyo advantage kasi alam nyo lang yung, mga op, yung, um, alam nyo lang yung limited options na pwede nyo gamitin. But on the other hand, medyo mahirap siyang i-distinguish kasi may mga tacit assumptions. Ano yung mga bagay na super basic na hindi na, hindi na natin kailangang i-prove? O yung mga kailangan, ay yung mga pwede na natin i-assume, alright? So, that's one one reason why in the design of the math and applied math curricula, I nasa medyo junior years yung pagtitake ng uh, math 155. But I do understand that uh, some sophomores uh, opted to take the course uh, this semester, which is fine as long as you have taken the uh, taken the uh, prerequisite or uh, the prerequisites. Pero yun nga medyo kailangan ng konting maturity sa math 155. So. I understand uh, na siguro yung mga sophomores baka medyo mga pasa simula, but nandiyan naman yung mga juniors nyo na pwede kayong tulungan. And I'll try to walk you through the process kasi nga medyo magkaiba yung uh, shift from the major and the service courses. In the service courses, again, the focus would be on the house. Paano mag-compute, paano mag um, Paano, uh, paano mag-prove o paano gumawa ng true tables, for instance, okay? So, kaya maraming examples dun sa handouts, dun sa materials, sa klase maraming examples na binibigay. Now, in Math 155 and in other uh, major courses, the focus would be on the why, alright? 
So kaya ang focus natin ay magpakita ng mga uh, i-discuss yung mga definitions at tingnan yung implications nila tapos i-prove yung mga immediate consequences. And we will not be uh, giving too much examples. So if you're expecting a lot of examples in the lectures, Medyo babaan yung expectations, though you can ask for examples if you really need more examples and illustrations. But again, the focus of the course would be on the wise. All right, so medyo ano to, uh, medyo kakaiba dun sa service courses. Though if you have browsed through the uh, the materials, then makikita nyo, meron naman mga exercises na binigay. But again, the examples that I will be uh, doing in class would be more on the proving part. And mostly sila yung, ang itatry kong i-prove ay yung mga may implications. Uh, either for the, for the beauty of the results or for the, for the insights that we will gain from the proofs. Okay? Now, <clears throat> this is an introduction to analysis, especially for those who would be uh, going to graduate school. So, uh, though ngayon, ang, sa math at saka applied math required ng 155, no? Kasi nung panahon namin, again, disclaimer, which is not too long ago. All right, so hindi required sa applied math ang math 155. So elective lang nila ang 155. But uh, students, applied math students who are, who are trying to get to graduate school are, um, are put in a disadvantage. Lalo na kung hindi nila na-take as an elective yung 155. And I think rightfully so, uh, um, a knowledge of the foundations of... Uh, the calculus of one variable is very important for both math and applies, applied math students. So it's a blessing na required na para as ng programs to take math 155. Okay. So this is a good foundation for functional analysis, harmonic analysis, real analysis, differential geometry. And I would like to add uh, optimization theory um, also for a probability theory. So ito yung mga mga fields na mag uh, nagbe-benefit from a good foundation in advanced calculus, right? So now what is the promise of the course? Ano yung, ano yung, um, ano yung goal natin para sa end ng semester? So I will try to do my, uh, I will do my best to help you so that at the end of the semester, you will be able to discuss the, pro uh, the fundamental properties of R and its topology, okay? Second, discuss the theory of limits, derivatives, and integrals of function of one variable. So, and then look at the uh, look at the uh, look at the verb use here. Discuss. So, hindi lang hindi tayo magko compute ng limits, derivatives, and integrals. Though maybe in some of the homeworks you will be asked to compute for things, but the uh, the the main uh, goal here is for you to discuss the theory of limits, derivatives, and integrals. And then you need to be able to analyze mathematical statements that are that are of central importance in the theory of real analysis. And of course, since this is a math major course, you need to be able to prove basic results in real analysis. So ito yung mga apat na bagay na hanapin ko sa mga homeworks and problem sets. So take note of this kasi yan yung checklist. Na sana sa end ng semester, ma-check nyo sila, silang lahat. Okay? Now, next we have the course outline. So we will have uh, four chapters, the real numbers, sequences in R, limit and continuity, differentiation of a function of one variable, and the, uh, the last por portion should be V, integration of a function of uh, one variable. Okay, so I won't go through the uh, the course outline too much because it's siguro um, Di pa masyadong interested dyan, but we have five units, okay? So, and then we'll start today with the real numbers. And if you will browse through uh, the, the course outline, napakarami mga familiar terms, tama ba? So, most of these na, na encounter nyo na, either sa elementary and high school math or sa, sa math 30 series, all right? So, I don't think there is... Um, Probably except uh, except this guys. Probably you have met uh, all of these terms, so nothing uh, shocking about this guys. Pero yung mas titing na natin yung malalim na pagunawa sa mga topics nito. Alright. 
And then the mode of delivery, we're still in mo uh, in online mode. Um, but I will be holding two synchronous meeting every week para makover natin yung laman ng uh, the mga modules. Of course, uh, attendance is not required for um, OVPAA memo, but it is highly encouraged because uh, what I'll do in the synchronous meetings, this will not just be a consultation. Uh, I will really be discussing everything as if we are doing it face to face. So kung ano yung ginagawa ko sa face to face, yun din yung gagawin ko rito, except na nakaharap lang ako sa computer ko and that you are not physically with me. But let's try as much as possible to uh, simulate face-to-face uh, -face environment. Um, so I will urge you guys to, uh, to ask your questions. You can raise your hand uh, if you want to say something. Even if I'm, I'm in the middle of the discussion, feel, uh, feel free to butt in. If you have a question, tanong nyo na sa, uh, kagad sa akin. All right? Kesa antayin nyo pa siya, makakalimutan nyo siya, or mahiya na kayong magtanong later. Okay? So our LMS is still Canvas, so um, all of the submissions will be done there, and we'll be using MS Teams for the rest of the semester. Okay. Now, course materials, uh, we have uh, the Math 155 lecture notes uh, in Canvas. Merong link don into my Google folder. I hope na access nyo guys. Tama ba? Na access nyo ba siya? Uh, hopefully, hindi ko na miss yung uh, yung privacy setting ng Google folder na yon. But there's a link uh, in Canvas for the Google folder containing our five lecture notes, one for each unit. So, uh, access nyo ba guys? Uh, let me see some confirmation. Yes, okay. please, sir. Okay, thank you. Nakala ko ay uh, nag na ako dito. Kasi tigil nyo muna yung Netflix na pinapanood nyo, no? Mamaya na. <laughs> Sorry, ganun. And then, yeah, so lecture notes. So, na access nyo naman siya. Uh, the lecture notes were, pre uh, were prepared by Dr. Uh, Eduardo Hatulan. Um, he was teaching, uh, he taught uh, Math 155 last semester. Tapos may petition section sa, uh, for Math 155 last sem. Tapos sa akin nabigay yung Math 155. And that was given to me, uh, I think, a couple of days or a week before the start of classes so i don't have to uh, i don't have time to to prepare my own materials so sabi ko kay sir edu sir edu pa copya na lang ng lecture notes and uh, he graciously agreed so and then yun na rin yung gagamitin ko this semester okay though i i had some uh, some modifications to it konting konti lang naman very minor so uh, yeah download yun na lang siya mula dun sa ating uh, mula dun sa link dun sa canvas sa canvas site natin all right so there might be some typos pa rin. I tried to edit it last semester. Kung meron pa rin ang mga nakalimutang typos, I let you know. I'll edit it as uh, as soon as possible. All right. And then to aid uh, those who will be doing the uh, or who will be uh, taking the class asynchronously, meaning yung mga hindi makaka-attend ng live sessions and would be studying on their own, or or if you just prefer to do the readings and the studying on your own, you can do so because I will still be providing weekly study guides. So, i-upload ko rin to kay Canvas. Uh, nakalagay doon kung ano yung dapat yung basahin for a particular week. All right? So, we'll try to follow that as much as possible. Pero alam na to ng mga taga Math 101 na uh, parang hindi ko talaga nasusunod yung study guides. Minsan napapahaba yung discussion on a certain topic or masyado lang akong, masyado lang akong madaldal or medyo marami nagre-recite. Hindi ko talaga natatapos yung sa study guides. But I prefer it that way. Um, kesa naman madaliin ko tapos matapos nga yung study guides pero half-baked naman yung pagkakadiscussed or uh, nalimit ko naman yung interaction with you guys. So let's try to make it as interactive as possible. Don't panic. If we'll not be able to finish the weekly study guides, we can adjust. We have lots of time uh, during the semester. So yeah. Pero yun lang. Uh, gabay lang natin yung weekly study guides. Alright? And then here's the... Uh, the yeah, course timetable. So uh, you will see here, uh, I already reserved um, um, some days for your uh, for submission requirements. And you will see that almost every week you will have uh, a submission, okay? Either a homework or a problem set, okay? So expect nyo na na every week meron kayong ipapasa. So, um, 
Uh, lagay nyo na to sa work schedule nyo na sa mass 155 laging may pinapasa. All right. So uh, so I hope wala nang mabibigla na sobrang daming pinapagawa sa math 155. Ito na yon. So nakalagay na dyan sa requirements yung mga kailangan yung ipasa at kailan. All right. For instance, ngayong week na to, meron kagad homework number one. So uh, but actually I'll make the deadline of uh, the homeworks to be on the Monday, uh, the week after. All right. So because this week we'll be talking about ordered fields and the axiom of completeness, tapos yun yung coverage ng homework one. At dahil by Thursday pa natin matatapos yung coverage ng homework one, yung deadline ng homework one will be on Monday, February 28, right before midnight. Okay, 11.59 p.m. on February 28. It will be available on Thursday, pero nireserve ko na siya kay Canvas. So ganun yung mangyayari week in and week out. Though we will have several accommodations whenever we have a problem set. So pwede nating uh, pag-usapan yung deadline ng mga problem sets because problem sets are major requirements for the course. And uh, yeah, yung mga homeworks naman, mabilisan lang yan. Uh, I think this uh, this can be done in one or two hours at most. So uh, hindi siya ganun kabigat. Yung mga problem sets siguro... Uh, three to five hours, so there would be uh, three or four problems. You will spend uh, one hour for each problem, so ganun yung magiging takbo ng mga problem sets. But homeworks, maximum of uh, one or two hours, okay? So yung iba natatapos siya ng 30 minutes and so on. So maiksi lang talaga yung mga homeworks, okay? And then at the time that I wrote the course guide, wala pang memo about the extension of the semester. So ang um, memo pa lang na Lumabas non ay yung wellness and recovery period, but there were no mention about the uh, the extension of the semester. That's why in this uh, outline, hanggang May 25 lang yung semester natin. But uh, the semester is already extended until the first or second week of June. So uh, I'll double check on that and adjust the uh, adjust the uh, the course outline accordingly. All right. Though kahit na yun, uh, hindi na ako magdadagdag ng topics in Math uh, 155. Gawin na lang nating buffer yung two weeks na yun para hindi ko kailangan magmadali pag discuss And there might be several uh, unforeseen suspension of classes and so on. So let's retain that. Tapos uh, with that said, siguro pwede nating i-adjust submission ng ilang mga homeworks later. Kasi we, we have uh, two weeks uh, additional. All right. So, yon. any uh, questions or suggestions so far? What do you think about the requirements? Masyado bang marami or what? So, ito yung time yon para mag-express ng mga hinaing at makipag-negotiate. Because I've said yesterday in uh, my classes, um, okay ako mapag-negotiate during the semester Pero pagpatapos na yung SEM, mahirap na. All right, so this is your chance to say your piece. Or if you will be silent, then I'll take it as a, as a yes na agree kayo dito sa plano ko for the semester. Oh yes, uh, Lyra? Hello po, sir. Ah, gusto ka lang pong itanong kung mga ilang items po or gano'n po ka-heavy yung homework po? Uh, yung mga homework, one problem lang. Uh, Actually, one problem, siguro may dalawang sub-questions. But these are really very short ones. So, uh, sa problem set, siguro, ano ba? Um, sa problem set, siguro may tatlong tanong, all right, or apat na tanong. Yung homeworks ay parang one, kalahate ng isang question sa problem set yung equivalent niya. Let me see if I have a sample um, homework here. Okay, let me see. Ito yung homework one namin last semester. So, um, parang ano lang, uh, siya ay, uh, parang more of uh, really exercise or illustration type. So, um, may pa-explain lang dyan sa simula. Okay. And then I'll give you a specific function, list down the elements of A, nagsasubstitute ka lang naman ng n equals 1, n equals 2. And so on. 
and then you will be asked to find the infimum and the supremum. So, ganito yung example ng isang homework. Though, two questions to, pero may iksi lang naman sila. So, uh, I think this is doable in one hour or less. Sa parang siyang yung pop quizzes. Kung face-to-face, siya yung mga pinapakwiz ng mga 10 or 20 minutes of uh, the actual class. All right? So, medyo advantage nga kayo kasi offline to. Meron kayong tatlong, uh, meron kayong Thursday and Friday to do it. And then meron pang weekend kung nagkatrabaho kayo tuwing weekends. And then also you still have the full Monday. So, you have five full days to finish, uh, to do a homework, which is this short. Tingnan ko kung meron pa akong uh, homework dito. Homework three. Okay, so ganito rin yung mga homeworks. So, hindi siya katulad nung lab exercises sa 174 na mahaba talaga. All right? Or uh, siguro sa mga nag-101 sa akin last semester, ito yung para mga worksheets natin. Though medyo may as maiksi na konti sa worksheets. Okay. So, this sample of a homework. Uh, okay. And then, sample problem set na rin. Pakita ko na rin siguro. Okay. Mahaba yung instruction. Kailangan niyang basahin lahat. This was problem set number one last semester. And then, part one is an essay, uh, essay part. So, I'll ask you several, uh, several questions here. And then, yung pangalawang tanong ay parang creating an illustration or an example. Ay, hindi pala, proving pala to. And then this guy is still a proving problem. And then ito yung example building. All right. So, mahaba yung problem set. All right. Though, lahat na pinasagot ako sa problem set last semester. Uh, okay, so here, Nagbigay ako ng maraming questions, but they only needed to submit four. So, and then the idea here is one hour per problem. So, five questions, pipili sila ng apat. So, siguro ganito na rin yung magiging pattern ng uh, um, problem sets for the semester. So, okay. So, if, uh, is that good with you guys? Pero actually, wala naman kayo magagawa, no? So... Unless may suggestions kayo. Okay. Wala namang violent reactions. O nagtitimpi kayo dyan. Ayon yung uh, gusto yung magsalita pero nagtitigil. All right. But uh, yeah, let's see how things uh, how things will go uh, throughout the semester. But, um, during the latter part of the semester, I adjusted a little bit. Uh, just ask them instead of four. Ginawa ko na lang tatlong uh, questions. So, sabihan nyo lang ako, and I can adjust. Pero hopefully, masabi nyo siya probably a week before the problem set uh, para may time akong baguhin yung, or pagplanuhan yung isusulat ko na problem set. Alright? So, other questions or comments? Medyo maingay yung background ko. Sana nakaya ng noise suppression ni Teams. Uh, any questions? So, kung wala naman, ito yung isa pa sa mahalaga. Uh, course requirements or grading scheme, 30% will be coming from the homeworks. And then uh, there would be around eight of them. And then we'll have three problem sets, 20% each. So, 60%. And then we'll have a final exam or a final project for 10%. So, naging students ko na naman kay Ay, dem, okay, ba pala yung Math 174, no? Uh, last semester, I just asked them to submit a final term paper reflecting on uh, their experience in Math 155. What are what are their uh, what are their uh, learnings or what are the things that they pick up from the course? So, kaya medyo magaan lang yung final exam. Mas magaan kaysa dun sa Math 101 and Math uh, 174 na technical yung final project. All right. So, kasi na pahirap ang kuna yung 155 all throughout the semester. So, binigay ko na sa kanila yung final exam na reflection paper na lang. And let's see. Maybe I'll do the same thing here. I'll let you know uh, towards the end of the semester. Okay? So, uh, is this a uh, breakdown of uh, the grade components fine with you? Any suggestions?
Okay, dahil tahimik kayo, carried na to. This would be fixed unless mag-propose ako sa inyo ng adjustments at the, uh, uh, during the semester. All right. And then what else? Uh, I think that's it. So here are some books that you can consult. The main text for the um, for the class would be uh, Stephen uh, Abbott's Understanding Analysis, and then additional readings can be found from K uh, from Kaplan, uh, Advanced Calculus, and Real Analysis by uh, Brockner et al. So I think mga usual kung ginagamit na references. Actually, yung first and third lang pala. I haven't seen a copy of uh, Kaplan yet. So you can um, you can uh, search the net for copies of these. Uh, better kung meron kayong hard copy, so that will be great. Um, I might take some of the uh, homework problems from these references. Uh, some questions from the problem sets might also be lifted from these guys. So uh, if you think it would be advantageous for you to get copies of these books, so search na siya, hanapin nyo na sila. All right? Though I guarantee you that the uh, that the um, the provided course materials here, the lecture notes will be sufficient. All right? So lahat naman ng kailangan nyo ay nandun na sa lecture notes. All right? And I think that's it. Uh, any questions about the course guide? Oh, by the way, uh, ito pala yung isa nating house rule. I'll be a little bit um, more strict about deadlines this semester, okay? Uh, if the deadline is 11.59 p.m. of a Monday, then if you submit beyond that, makapag-submit pa rin naman kayo kay Canvas up to a week. So, ililive kung open yung submission bin uh, one week after the deadline, but you will get 10% deduction of the perfect score every day that, uh, that has passed after the deadline. All right, but it will be great if you can let me know in advance, probably one week before or even one week after the deadline. If you will not be able, or if you was, uh, if you were not able to uh, to meet the deadline, that's fine. I'll accommodate you. I'll waive all those deductions. All right. So be any law ng reason kung bakit feeling yon hindi kayo makapagpasa or hindi kayo nakapagpasa on the deadline. And on the plus or minus one week period before and after the deadline, uh, I'll be more lenient in accepting um, late deduction waivers. However, beyond that, kung mga two weeks or three weeks after the deadline na kayo magsasabi, medyo magiging mas ano, uh, skeptical about your reasons. I'll be asking for proofs. I'll be, uh, I might be asking for additional documentation. Bakit uh, na late kayo magpasa? Or... Uh, I might even give you a different set of uh, of questions for the uh, for the homework or for the uh, for the problem set. So yon. So pag nagsabi kayo plus or minus one week, you're perfectly fine. You can do the uh, the same set of questions. Pero beyond that, once the submission bin in Canvas is closed, hindi na nag hindi na guaranteed na same problems yung tatanggapin ko. All right. So after the closure of the uh, submission bin, which is one week after the deadline, I might give you a different makeup um, homework or problem set. So again, the point here is not to penalize those who will be in unforeseen scenarios, but I want to encourage you guys to communicate with me. Pag nasabihan nyo naman ako, then everything was fine. Everything will run smoothly. But I don't want you guys to just leave me in the dark. Bawal yung ghosting dito. Na bigla na lang mawawala, susulpot um, a month after the deadline, or even worse, uh, sa submission and grades, tapos ipapasa nyo lahat. Again, after, uh, after a week na mag-close yung uh, submission bin, there is no guarantee that the same set of questions will apply to you. Okay? Kailangan ko lang talagang persayin kayo na makipag-usap sa akin. All right. I understand there are unforeseen circumstances, but uh, all I'm requesting is for you to communicate with me. All right. Lalo na pag nasabi niyo na maaga, sir, talaga hindi ko kakayanin na magpasa one week after the deadline. So siguro, sir, kaya ko tong ipasa after two weeks or after three weeks. Then I can advise you, oh, sige, gawin mo na yung same set of questions. Then pasa mo siya whenever you can. However, pag ginoos niyo ako, I might give you makeup. Uh, a different set of problems as your makeup exercise. Okay, 
So yeah, sabihan niyo ako, I, I am very much, uh, I'm very lenient and patient with students. Pero, yun nga, gusto ko nakikipag-communicate kayo. So I hope that, I hope that's fine, okay? Uh, any reactions, questions? Suggestions, violent reactions. Come on, guys. Oh, yes, uh, Michael. Sir, tanong ko Sir, lang po tanong if tanong pwede if pong type written sa homework and sa problem set na rin po. Uh, sige, um, hmm. nag-iisipan ko yan, no? Uh, Oh, sige, pwede naman. Kung kung talaga mas madali sa inyo na siya ay i, uh, i, uh, i computer process or i word process, that's fine. Pero wag sana magka-copy paste lang ah. So, yun yung ina-avoid namin. Kung bakit gusto namin ay handwritten almost lahat ng submissions. Kasi para at least kung nangopya man kayo, which I don't think you will do, pero worst case scenario, a student copies from another student required na handwritten, at least nagsulat siya. At sa pagsusulat, malamang nabasa niya naman kung ano yung sinulat niya. Uh, the only thing that we're avoiding sa, sa computer process ay kasi control A, control C, control V. At the push of those six buttons, meron ka ng problem set. But if you guys can commit not to do that, then okay, papayagan ko kayo na computerized yung submission. Okay? But it should be in a PDF file. Uh, nakalimit yung submission kay Canvas na dapat PDF file. So, save nyo lang yung Word file nyo o yung LaTeX file nyo as, um, as PDF, then you're good. Okay? And then, I do not look down upon students working as a group or collaborating with each other. I don't look down on students who, uh, who use online materials to, uh, to help them with their solutions or their problem sets. Um, Actually, I, I encourage it, but with a caveat that uh, make sure that when you write something, you really understood, you really understood it. So, kung nag-group study kayo, tapos nagtutulungan kayo para masagot yung isang question, that's fine. That's part of learning. Some will, uh, some actually strive at that environment. Then that's fine. Magtulungan kayo, mag-discuss kayo, sharing of ideas, uh, debate with each other, but. Um, at uh, when you when you write your solution, make sure that you only write what you understood, okay? And then that's perfectly fine. That's part of the process. And cite your references or your groupmates. So kung nag-work kayo, sampu kayo sa group, or kung nag-decide kayo na buong section, all 25 of you ay nagpunta sa isang Zoom meeting, tapos nag-discuss kayo, so that's fine with me. So sulat niyo yung pangalan yung lahat doon, 25. That's fine. No deductions. I will actually appreciate it more if you will uh, if you will cite your friends who work with you. Kung nag-consult kayo sa iba niyong kakilala or sa mga ka-org niyo, sa mga mas senior sa inyo, and that's also fine. Just acknowledge them. Just mention I consulted with one of my friends. Uh, his name is this uh, and so on. That's fine. If you found a solution on the net, or you patterned your solution after uh, another another uh, similar problem in the internet, then that's fine. Just tell me. Sabi mo, note, sir, uh, nakita ko yung pinattern ko yung solution ko dito sa nakita ko sa matexchange.com. Or I used the solution in matexchange.com, but I included some details. So that's perfectly fine with me. Because again, uh, number one, I think uh, that's part of the learning process, and I don't think it is bad as long as you understood what you wrote, and that's what I want you to do in the uh, in the uh, in the homework and the problem sets. This is not just to evaluate you, but for you to learn. Okay, so okay lang siya. And then number two, you can not prevent from working with each other or to look at the internet. Napaka ramming technologies. Bakit hindi natin sila gagamitin? So that's uh, perfectly fine. Also, kung may mga kailangang i-compute, halimbawa, nagpa, nagpa-tailor series expansion ako or nagpa-evaluate ako ng isang expansion tapos 100 terms, uh, hindi naman kailangan na uh, ipakita niyo yung solution mano-mano. Pwede kayong gumamit ng, ng online solvers. Kung meron akong pina-integrate na napaka-komplikado, tapos hindi ko naman sinabi na integrate by hand, then pwede kayong pumunta sa Wolfram Alpha or any online solver, ipa-integrate yung pinapa-integrate ko. 
kumpart siya ng solution. As long as hindi ko sinabi na gawin siya by hand, you are free to use any technology that you have. Kung meron kayong calculator na kayong mag-evaluate ng integrals, then that's fine. So let's use technology. Nasa ano na tayo? Nasa 2022 na tayo. So uh, we should not shy away from using technology. All right? Uh, ano pa ba? Okay, so questions? Other questions? Come on, guys. Uh, sir, question, sir. Yeah. Regarding po dun sa sinabi niyo po kanina kung pwedeng word process. What about naman, sir, kung handwritten pero sa gamit ng digital tablet, sir? Yeah, okay din siya. Uh, actually, I don't care <laughs> kung ano yung, ano, kung ano, kung paano niyo siya ginawa. Ang um, gusto ko lang ay PDF file, single PDF file, bawal yung um, hiwa-hiwalay na PDF files. Tapos, dapat Maintindihan niyo yung sinulat niyo. Yun lang yung dalawa kong requirement. I don't care how you get to that output as long as those two things are met. So, uh, yun pala. Uh, pwede niyo kasing gawin. Sabi nga ni, uh, um, sabi ni Michael, I computerized. Sabi ni David, kung sinulat sa tablet, that's fine. Uh, pero kung wala kayong, uh, wala kayong tablet and you don't want to, uh, to type everything or encode everything in latex, pwede naman magsulat kayo sa papel, picturean niyo siya, tapos i-save nyo as a PDF. Kaya lang, ang request ko lang, huwag naman yung per page ay isang file, yung PDF. So, pwede nyo siyang, uh, you can download Adobe Scan. So, free naman siya sa App Store at uh, saka, sa Google Play Store at saka sa uh, Apple Store. Uh, Adobe Scan. So, magtitake ka ng pictures on document. If you have 10 pages dun sa handwritten solution mo, Pipicturean mo bawat isang bond paper kung saan mo sinulat yung, yung solution or any page that you have. Pipicturean mo siya. Tapos isa-save siya ni Adobe Scan into a single PDF file. Alright? Maganda pati yung, yung Adobe Scan kasi kinakrap niya na talaga yung uh, kinakrap niya na talaga yung document. So hindi mo na kailangang i-edit yung picture and so on. So automatically via AI I uh, Hinahanap niya yung document. Tapos fino format niya sa so document, save as a single PDF file, and then you can easily upload it. So, yun. Uh, there are other uh, apps na ganun din yung capability. So, ano nga ba yung ginagamit? Cam scanner, ginagamit nung iba. Uh, ano pa bang pwedeng ganun din? Yeah, hanapin niyo lang. Uh, libre naman yung mga apps na yun. Uh, hmm. Meron na isip na sabihin, pero nakalimutan ko siya ulit. Ah... Uh, so while I'm thinking, uh, any other uh, questions? Wala na? Okay guys, ano pa lang? 12.18. Hanggang 1 tayo, no? Medyo pinapahaba ko para hindi ako magsimula ng discussion eh. Pero mukhang ready na kayo to discuss. So wala nang questions dito. Sayang kasi yung oras, so... Sure? Okay, course outline is settled. Going once, going twice, going thrice. Okay, tapos na yung course outline. Dahil marami pang oras, let's start with Math 155 agad-agad. Para... Um, mas gusto kasi yung nauuna kaysa nauhuli. But actually, feeling ko hindi na natin talaga matatapos yung study guide number one kagad. Kasi kailangan ko makover yung first 10 pages nitong, um, nitong lecture notes. Pero I don't think I can finish that this week. But let's try. Okay? Uh, all right. So let's uh, start the discussion. Chapter one is about the real number system. And as I mentioned earlier, what we'll try to do here is to recreate the real number system. Alam nyo na to from elementary. All right, alam niyo na yung mga properties ng real numbers, but we will try to dig deeper. Bakit nangyari yung mga yun? Or why uh, why are uh, why those properties are true? Why do they happen? At saka ano yung mga bagay na inassume lang natin? All right? Uh, basically ano yung mga axioms para sa real numbers natin. Okay? So, uh, for most part, I want you to forget everything that you learned about real numbers for a little bit. Kasi yung ibang technicalities dito ay medyo mahirap tanggapin sa simula. All right? Especially when I talk about additive inverses and so on. So forget everything muna about real number systems. Uh, about the real numbers. 
OK, so what you can imagine and um, use for now are yung real numbers. Ang laman niya ay yung mga real numbers. We don't know about their properties yet. Alam lang natin na si 1 a real number, si negative 1 a real number, si pi a real number, si negative 3 fourths a um, real number, and that's it. So for now, let's assume that all we know are the members of the real number systems, nothing more. Okay, so parang hypnotize ko muna kayo. Yun lang yung alam nyo, all right? And then let's try to rebuild the real number systems from scratch, or actually from almost scratch, knowing only its members. What are the properties they possess, or what are the properties that we will assume to be true for this uh, for, for these numbers, all right? Na kailangan nating magsimula to build up our mathematical system. Because if you can remember, when you studied axiomatic systems in Math 101, we always start with undefined terms. Ito yung mga bagay na napaka-basic na hindi natin sila kailangang i-define. So these are tacitly assumed to be naturally occurring. So in our case, our undefined terms would be the members of the set of real numbers. Hindi ko siya i-define, i-assume lang natin na alam natin yung itsura ng mga real numbers. Okay? Now, the second requirement for an axiomatic development would be your axioms. Ano yung axioms? These are the statements that we are assumed to be true for the sake of what is to follow. Uh, some, some of the early mathematicians thought of axioms or postulates to be self-evident truths. They are very basic. They are, uh, they are actually natural for the undefined terms to follow. So parang ito yung mga natural laws na pinafollow ng mga undefined terms. They are so natural that we don't, uh, we don't uh, demand for a proof for them or they really don't need proving. Sila yung mga observations arising from, uh, from nature, okay? So that's basically the foundation of any axiomatic system. You have your undefined terms and you have your axioms. And then in order to build that mathematical or that axiomatic system, we'll try to deduce some properties we call theorems, lemmas, corollaries, uh, from, from uh, about the undefined terms coming from the axioms. So gagamitin natin yung mga axioms para makakuha ng mga properties at madeduce yung mga important characteristics and their consequences dun sa mga undefined terms. Okay? Now, tapos, uh, kaya lang may requirements sa sa axioms, no? Can anybody remind me what are the uh, desirable characteristics of an axiomatics or an, of a set of axioms? Tandaan nyo pa ba? Sa isang mathematical o isang axiomatic system, ano yung mga ideal properties ng isang set of axioms? Uh, as in 101 and 15 uh, and 174 bonus points for recitation. So in a note kayo mga nag-recite. Uh, anybody who can give me some desirable properties of axioms? Kalimba, meron kang n axioms. Ano yung mga gusto nating properties of these axioms? Uh, sige, let's start with Lyra. Um, consistency po, sir. All right. Uh, what do you mean by consistency? Tanda mo pa ba yung ano niya? Come again, sir. Uh, yeah. What about consistency? Ano nga tong consistency? Ang pagiging consistent ng mga axioms? Um, ano po? Um, hindi po yung system po will not be able to prove both a, sa a statement and its negation po. Okay, that's great. Yeah, kung consistent siya, uh, hindi ka makakakuha ng contradicting statements. All right, so, uh, or in other words, uh, walang dalawang axioms na magkasalungat, right? So you cannot get a statement, uh, you cannot prove that the statement is true and false at the same time, all right? So that's good. Thank you, Lyra. Uh, some other uh, properties I saw. Kino uh, abe mga nagtasa kami. Binabana nila. So some other properties. Can you remember uh, some other properties? Oh, by the way, if you guys cannot uh, cannot unmute or use your microphone, you can raise your hand and then I'll recognize you and then you can type your answer in the chat box. Oh, no, lang yung mga nagtask kanina ng kamay. Uh, Saira, nagtask ka ba ng kamay? Yung ano, uh, okay, meron kang, uh, meron kang naalala na aside yes, from consistency. Pa. 
Oh, yes, yung hindi ahead. po siya mapaprove from other actions po. Alright. Com complete po. Uh, ah, independent. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. thank you, uh, Sarah. That's right. Gusto natin, independent yung mga actions natin, meaning dapat yung isang action hindi mo kayang i-prove using another action. Alright, so kasi kung mapaprove mo siya from another action, then there's no point of putting it as an action. Alright? So, sabihin mo na lang siya isang theorem. Kasi kaya mo siyang i-prove mula dun sa isang action. Alright? So, yun. Independence. So, meron pa ba? Thank you, Syra. Uh, may isa pa nagtaas eh. Um, Kamalala kung sino. Pero may naalala pa ba kayo? May dalawa pa. Actually, nasabi ni Syra yung isa pa. No? Yung isa ay uh, completeness. But completeness is actually just a dream. Uh, uh, ito yung gusto, na, gusto sana natin na yung axiomatic system natin can produce all possible uh, can, uh, can produce all possible theorems. So, or I mean, this, uh, the axiomatic system is desired to be able to, or to be, uh, should be able to prove that any statement about the objects in the axiomatic system is either true or false. Yun yung completeness. Gusto natin na pag binigyan tayo ng isang statement about something in our universe, dapat kaya natin siyang i-prove kung totoo or hindi. But um, Gerdel proved na kung meron kang consistent system, hindi siya pwedeng maging complete. All right? So kung meron kang set of non-contradictory uh, axioms, it is automatic that there would be statements that cannot be proven to be either true or false. So, yun yung sinasabi nung incompleteness theorem ni, uh, ni uh, Gerdel. Uh, I think uh, it was mentioned by John Michael. Thank you, uh, John Michael. So, I'll count that as your recitation as well. So, yun. Pero, yun nga. Nasa wish list lang yung completeness. Pero pag consistent na yung system, hindi na siya pwedeng maging complete. Uh, Na-prove na yan ni Gerdel. Uh, kailan nga ba? Uh, Naalala nyo ba? 1800s or something like that? And then the last one, which is often uh, um, forgotten, is it should be finitely describable. All right. So, ibig sabihin, you only have a finite number of actions. And uh, the less the number of actions is, the better. So, ito yung mga gusto nating properties ng isang axiomatic system. Now, let's look at what are the actions that we impose on the set of real numbers. But here, when we say real number system, we will assume, nandito na yung collection natin ng mga, uh, yung, ng mga real numbers. So this, this is uh, our undefined, uh, these are our undefined terms, the set of real numbers. We denote it by double struct R. And then we will assume that there are two binary operations. So meron kang addition and multiplication na dinefined dito sa yung set of real numbers. Now, in the beginning, addition and multiplication can be any two operations satisfying the, the, uh, the different properties. Pero sige, we can now assume yung usual addition and usual multiplication na natutunan natin for real numbers. Okay? So may permiso na kayo na assume yung addition at multiplication na natutunan natin yung grade 1, yung grade 2, and so on. So same addition and multiplication denoted by these uh, two operation symbols. Okay, and then our first set of axioms would be on the properties of the real numbers with respect to addition and multiplication. And when I say addition and multiplication, these are the usual addition and multiplication that we know from elementary. Okay, tignan natin ano yung mga properties ng addition that they are so basic that they are assumed without proof. Okay, hindi natin kailang iprove etong mga properties na ito. Though in topology or in other courses, you will need to prove all of these. All right? Pero ngayon, lalo na siguro sa math, uh, sino nga ba sa inyo mga nag-111? Siguro yung mga galing ng 175 ay uh, nakapag-111. Uh, all right? So that is, sa so 111, pinuprove nyo pa itong mga bagay na to. But in math 155, we will consider them as actions. They are the field actions for the set of real numbers. Though they can be proved using the definition of addition and multiplication in some textbooks, you will see proofs. 
Pero ang kaibahan kasi doon, dinefine nila yung addition and multiplication using some axioms. Tapos pinroob nila itong, addition, itong mga properties na to as a theorem. Pero sa atin, wala tayong ina-assume for addition and multiplication. Ang i-assume natin as axioms ay itong mga properties na ito. All right? So this would be assumed to be true for the set of uh, real numbers. Axiom number one. Yeah, A1. So, pagka may A sa unahan, it is considered an action. So, addition is commutative. The ordering of the add-ins do not matter or doesn't matter. Okay. Second, associativity. The grouping of the add-ins doesn't matter. Okay. Third, the existence of additive identity. So, here A3 is telling us that there is a number called zero such that when added to another real number, either to the left or to the right, will give us back the real number. Kaya siya identity. Kasi wala siyang effect dun sa identity ng isang real number kung kanino natin siya inan. Okay? And we will assume that the additive identity for the set of real numbers is the number zero. Okay? So again, zero preserves the identity of all other real numbers with respect to addition and hence the name additive identity for zero. Okay? So, at, ayun, may nag-exist, uh, additive identity. All right? And then, action number four, the existence of a unique additive inverse. So, in this case, we say that there is exactly one real number denoted by negative A. So, just be careful here. When you see a negative sign in front of a real number, okay, so, hindi siya yung, hindi siya, for now, hindi siya yung the same as a negative, as the negative number. All right? So, pag meron kang negative A na nakita, you cannot imagine this as a negative number. Right? Kasi hindi pa nga natin alam yung negative number. Alam lang natin meron tayong set of real numbers. Meron tayong mga symbols para sa kanila. Pero hindi pa natin sila kilalang lahat. All right? However, alam natin na merong, um, additive identity para sa isang number A. So when you see a negative A, you will not think of it as a negative real number. Again, pardon the word, I haven't defined what a negative number is, pero yun nga, notion natin ng real numbers, alam na natin yung mga negative numbers, all right? Pero forget about that for a moment. When you see negative A, that means it is the additive inverse of A, all right? So a negative sign or a minus sign preceding a real number means that that is the additive number or the additive inverse of that particular number. All right. So this is negative A. This is not uh, the real number per, per se, but it is the additive inverse of the number A. So it might be helpful if you read this one to be the additive inverse of A. Do not read it as negative A because you might be confused with the number negative A, right? But this is the additive inverse of A. And what, what do we mean by the additive inverse? When we say the additive inverse, it is the number that when added to A will give us back the additive identity. All right? So see, see additive inverse ni A denoted by minus A, siya yung number na, pinag, na pag inad ko kay A, either to the left or to the right, will give me back the additive identity zero. Okay? So that's what we mean by additive inverse, and that's what we mean when you write negative A. Okay? Okay, Ben, guys? Okay, that's one crucial thing because we'll be using this in the uh, in one of the proofs later. Okay? So I, have to, I hope that's fine. So those are the four axioms for addition. Okay? So we will not prove this, uh, this, four, uh, this four things. We will assume that they are true. Okay? Now, similarly, we have some properties for multiplication. They're almost uh, the same as what we had for addition. Look at A5. It is the commutativity of multiplication. A6 is the associativity of multiplication. A7 is the existence of multiplicative identity, pero this time we see a different number from zero, or from the additive identity. Okay? Kasi nga, pag sinabi natin identity, dapat na preserve niya yung identity ng isang real number under the operation considered. When you say multiplicative identity, this should be a real number that preserves the identity of a given real number, 
meaning when multiplied to another real number, it won't change the given real number. And true enough, if, uh, if I have any real number A, I multiply one to its left or, uh, or to its right, or multiply one to its left, yung paring number na yon ang nakukuha ko pabalik. So, siya yung multiplicative identity. Okay? Now, there's also a notion of a multiplicative inverse. Remember, an inverse is something that you will operate on another real number to get back the identity. When talking about multiplicative inverse, you should think of what should be multiplied to the given real number, so I'll get back the multiplicative identity, which is 1. So, when you see a to the minus 1, and these are your usual exponents because we haven't defined what exponents are yet. Okay, but that I notion of exponents. So yung a to the negative one is simply a notation for the multiplicative inverse of a. So you, if you see a to the minus one, you might think of it as, uh, or maybe it's better if you read it as the multiplicative inverse of a, meaning what should be multiplied to a both to the right and to the left in order to get the multiplicative identity one. Okay, so good so far. Are our conventions clear? Oh, by the way, the, uh, another notation for a to the minus one is one over a. So this guy is not the fraction one over a. It's just a notation for the for the multiplicative inverse of the number a. And actually, I missed one important thing. Hindi lahat na Real numbers, I, mul I my multiplicative inverse. The existence of a multiplicative inverse is only guaranteed for non-zero real numbers. Because you will see later, it is impossible to get a multiplicative inverse for zero. Okay, I think that's in one of our theorems later, or a consequence of one of the theorems later. All right? So, okay pa ba? Uh, okay ba yung notations, yung conventions? Is it clear? Kasi ito yung minsan mahirap tanggapin. All right? Probably those who have taken 111 already encountered this. Yung mga notations na yan. Mahirap kasi siyang i-detach from what we learned before. Uh, unlearning is actually a very hard thing. Yeah, tama dyan, Michael. Pang 111 lang yung, uh, ah, pang BS math lang yung 111. So, yeah. And usually that is taken kasabay nga pala ng 155. So, uh, so that being said, so majority of you will just be seeing it for the first time. Tama ba? So that pala medyo maging uh, mas uh, careful ako with this uh, with these things. But so far, everything's good. Come on, guys, react naman kayo. Grabe, ano, um, snobbish pala kayo, no? Manda kayo sa homework, saka sa problem set. Ganyan na, no? <laughs> Alright, so, sige, uh, let it simmer, okay? So, mga notations na na. Then, I'll throw another axiom, axiom 9. So, axiom 9 naman, it's a combination of addition and multiplication. This is the distributive property of multiplication over addition. Meaning, if you want to multiply a real number to a sum, you can just take the sum of the products first. All right. So, on distributive property, a times uh, b plus c is equal to ab plus ac. All right. That's axiom number nine. Okay. And then let's throw in some equality properties. Uh, the equality properties are actually, they are also considered axioms, but I think it was Aristotle who said these are the self-evident truths. Tawag niya yata dito nung, nung panahon niya yung mga postulates because they are uh, true for any mathematical system, all right? So we will adopt this as axioms, the equality property or the equality axioms, all right? So reflexive property means Something is equal to itself. Symmetry, if A is equal to B, then B is equal to A, meaning we can just interchange yung positions ng equal uh, 
ng equal values or ng equal entities with respect to the equal sign. Equality is also transitive. If A is equal to B, then B is, uh, and B equals C, then A is equal to C. If two things are equal to the same thing, then those things are, and those two things are equal, all right? C, uh, C A at saka si C parehas equal kay B, therefore C A dapat equal then kay C, all right? And then number four, if you add the same thing to, uh, to two equal values, then the sums will be the same, all right? So if you add C to both sides, then, uh, you will get two equal values, all right? Okay. And the same thing goes for multiplication, all right? The multiplication property of equality, kung meron kang dalawang equal na bagay, mag-multiply ka ng kahit anong real number sa left at saka right side ng equation, the products will still be equal to each other. And again, nothing shocking about this, guys, because we already know this from elementary, and these are actually self-evident. Pero kailangan natin siyang idagdag kasi nga meron tayong meta-action of ignorance. Parang tabula rasa kayo sa simula. Walang laman. Ngayon, paunti-unti natin nilalagyan ng mga assumptions o ng mga rules yung nilalaro natin game, which is the game of the axiomatic development of real numbers. So these are the rules that we need to follow. Then let's look at the consequences of these rules, all right? But before that, uh, let's define subtraction and addition. Just, but these are just shorthand notations. Kasi ba nagtataka kayo, meron tayong four basic operations. Pero yung pala, in the beginning, we only have two. We have addition and multiplication. How, um, how this, uh, or how do subtraction and division came about? Okay. The answer is they are just defined from addition and multiplication. So they are derived operations from those two basic ones. In fact, subtraction is just the addition of the multiplicative inverse. So subtraction is not a new operation. It's still a disguised addition. So pardon shorthand notation for the addition by the additive inverse. So whenever you see A minus B, Kaya lang sa axiomatic development natin, addition lang yung addition at multiplication lang yung operations natin. But if you want to talk about subtraction, then the subtraction is defined simply to be, or the, the difference A minus B is simply defined to be A plus the additive inverse of negative B. And similarly for division, as long as the divisor is non-zero, then A divided by B is the same as A times the multiplicative inverse of B, all right? And another notation for A divided by B is A over B. But again, for now, we should not confuse A over B here from the fraction A over B, okay? So, hindi siya yung fraction na A over B. Kasi ito ay notation para sa division. Eventually, we will realize that they are equal to each other or they will just uh, coincide. But for now, A over B is our notation for division. Okay? Kasi nga, kung babalikan nyo itong notes, hindi ko din define ano yung itsura ng mga, real num ng mga real numbers. Alam ko lang, mga real numbers, mga objects sila. Pwedeng alien notations yung gamitin natin para sa mga real numbers. Pero yung real numbers na yun, merong addition at multiplication na defined sa kanila that sa satisfying axioms 1 until 9, okay? And then from those uh, operations, addition and multiplication, we can define these two operations, okay? But even if we don't know how those real numbers look like, hindi natin alam anong itsura ng mga real numbers. Alam lang natin, set siya ng mga numbers na may property A1 to A9. Pero hindi natin, so far, alam pa ano yung mga itsura nila. Okay? So those are just abstract notions. Kaya medyo kalimutan muna natin yung mga fancy symbols na natutunan natin before. Okay? And I think with that, we're ready with the first theorem for the semester. It's the cancellation law for addition. And you will see na, sir, napaka-basic yan. Ginagamit natin yan since elementary. Pero kasi hindi siya action. Hindi siya pwedeng maging action kasi provable siya using, uh, using some of the uh, actions that we have laid down. So pag sinama ko to as an axiom, hindi na magiging independent yung axiomatic system ko. Right? 
and this might be a good proof exercise before we go along and do some more complicated proofs. So think on that supply the proof gen and let's just analyze it and see what's the reason behind these proofs, okay? And I will do this from time to time because uh, uh, the lecture notes may more proofs included. Sometimes I will just uh, discuss the proof, read the proof, justify every line. So just uh, you'll get the idea how to analyze or to read the proof na mababasa nyo from books and so on that will help you to, to develop some techniques para magsulat ng mga sariling proofs. But however, from time to time, I will write a proof from scratch para naman makita nyo yung spontaneous uh, thought process, okay? So having said that, dun sa mga gagawin kong proof sa klase, baka minsan mas taka ko sa gitna, makalimutan ko yung steps. Kasi nga, hindi ko siya i-prepare beforehand. I'll try to prove it spontaneously para magkaroon kayo ng idea dun sa thought process para kasama nyo ako nag-iisip, all right? So yun yung dalawang modes kung paano natin babasahin yung mga proofs. So let's do mode number one sa theorem 1.1. Ito na yung proof. Let's just analyze the proof and understand Bakit siya nangyari? Okay? So let's see. Theorem 1.1. If A, B, and C are real numbers and A, C plus, uh, uh, A plus C equals B plus C, then A equals B. So this is a classical conditional statement, an if-then statement. So kailangan natin ng conditional proof. And remember, when you write a proof, pwede mong gamitin lahat ng nasa if part. Okay? And we usually start from the statements in the if part of the statement, and hopefully, we can arrive at the conclusion A equals B. And there are several methods of proof that you can use to arrive at the conclusion A equals B. You can do direct proof, indirect proof, proof by mathematical induction, proof by contraposition, uh, proof by construction, and ano the method of proof, methods of proof. So yeah, I think those are the, ba the, the basic methods of proof. And then I think for this one, we can do a uh, direct proof, meaning I will just use the if uh, the assumptions from the if part in order to get directly to the uh, conclusion A equals B. So magsisimula ako sa if part, gusto ko ipakita yung nasa then part. Okay? So kaya yung proof pwedeng magsimula sa A plus C ay equal kay B plus C. And I know this is assumed to be true because this is part of the assumptions of the theorem. Nandun siya sa if part, sa so isa siyang premise. So pwede mo siyang gamitin sa proof right away. Okay? Tapos mula rito, hopefully makarating tayo sa A equals B. So we can do a lot of things here. Okay? So tingnan natin, ano yung ginawa sa umpisa? Ginawa dito sa umpisa, first line, uh, this line. What do you think was done here? Any volunteer? Ano yung reason? Kasi magandang ganito yung pagbabasa ng proof. Just don't, uh, don't just accept everything that is written there. Ask for the reason or think of what's the reason behind this line of proof. So what can you say about this? Ano yung ginamit na property dito? Uh, yes. Um, yes, uh, David? Uh, sir, I think it's addition, it's addition property, property of equality. equality. So okay, great. Negative C to both sides. All right, thank you. That's perfect. So we use the additive property of equality here because we have two equal numbers here. And we just, since they are equal, we are free to add any number to both sides of the equation and the resulting sum will still be equal to each other. Yun yung sinasabi ng addition property of equality. And David is right. All we did was to add the additive inverse of C to both sides of the equation, okay? Just be careful, we added negative C to A plus C. Kasi yung addition, binary operation lang siya, all right? So ngayon sa simula, medyo strict ako sa mga grouping symbols. Binary operations, ibig sabihin binary, so ibig sabihin dalawa dapat yung operands. Dalawa lang at a time yung kaya nating i-add. A plus C is a number on its own, it's a real number. So yung quantity na A plus C, siya yung dadagdagan ko ng negative C. That's why the uh, the proof was very careful in maintaining the grouping symbol for A plus C. Because A plus C is taken to be a single entity, then the additive inverse of C is another real number, and then since addition is binary in nature, I can do the operation on these two quantities. All right? Ganun yun nangyari. And then what happened to the next line? 
Uh, can anybody uh, tell me what happened there? Anong ginamit naman dito ang property? Yes, uh, um, nakasagot na si Lyra, nakasagot na si Zyra, others? Uh, Jericho? Um, sir, I shot a short TV tip. Okay, great. Thank you. Associativity. Kasi nga, napalitan yung grouping, right? Ang unang magka-group ay si A plus C. Kaya lang dito, pinag-group si C at saka si negative C. Alright? Thank you, Jerry. And that's fine. Kasi assume na natin na totoo yung associative property for addition. And then, what happened in the next line? Ah, uh, yes, uh, Michael? Bale, sir, ginamit naman po yung action po ng existence of additive inverse of C right. po. Okay, great. Uh, I think that's A4 nga ba? So, pwede kayong gumamit ng, uh, ng mga numbers dito sa theorems. Or you can just mention the name. That's fine. Pero mas may exceed na A4, no? So, by A4, kasi alam natin na, na si negative C ay notation natin para sa additive inverse ni C. And that is the number that can be added to C in order to recover the additive identity. So pag meron kang C, mag-plus ka sa kanya ng additive inverse niya, ang sagot nating makukuha ay yung additive identity. All right? Okay? And that's the reason why C plus negative C is equal to zero. All right? Hindi dahil alam, na, alam natin kung paano mag-add. Alam natin siya dahil sa additive property or the additive inverse property or the fact that negative C is definitely our notation for the additive inverse of the number C. Okay? And then last line. Last line. Ah, uh, yes, Therese. Sir, ginamit po yung A3. A3? Uh, ano nga yung A3? Um, existence of additive identity po. Alright, so the existence of additive identity, or you can say this is the fact that zero is the additive identity, right? So thank you, uh, Therese. That's right. Kasi nga, alam natin na si zero yung additive identity, meaning it preserves the identity of any real number under addition. If you add zero to A, it doesn't matter. A is preserved. But when you add zero to B, B is preserved. Nothing different there, okay? And luckily, this is what we want. Right, so shading as a then part. So using conditional proof, we have derived the consequent from the antecedents. So we end the proof right here. Okay. So, eto yung parang sample. Oh, this is a taste of what we'll be doing the entire semester. Okay. So eto yung mga proofs na gagawin natin. So I think we can stop here. Uh, sorry, overtime na ako ng three minutes. Usually na tatapos talaga ako five minutes before class. If you need to leave early, that's fine. Okay, you can just watch the recording later. But I'll try as much as possible to dismiss you either 12.50 or 12.55. Okay? Uh, but before we leave, those who recited, paki uh, drop a comment naman na nag-recite kay today. Just uh, put your, um, put your, um, put your nicknames on the chat. Lalo na yung mga nag, uh, nag-recite verbally. Yung mga nag-recite through the chat box, okay na sila. Babasahin ko na lang yung nasa chat box. So leave your nicknames on the uh, on the chat para malaman ko kung sino yung mga nag-recite today. And you will get tiny additional scores for, uh, yeah, that will that you can use later. So, yeah. Okay, so any questions, clarification so far? So we'll call it a day here. Uh, we'll start with uh, theorem 1.2. We'll write a, f uh, a full proof for it. And then, uh, yeah, then we'll carry on from there. Any questions? Okay, yeah, we're warning Nessie teams five minutes left. Any questions? Okay, they're having none. So thank you guys. Uh, and then let's see, uh, let's see each other again on Thursday. Have a good one. Bye bye. Thank you, thank sir. you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, you're welcome.